Right, so here we are, out the car, and we're back. Very different weather. Freezing. Absolutely freezing, like freezing. The ground is rock hard, but this is where the work kind of starts for me for for this season, really, because I, what, I had a lesson with you, what was it, September? Yeah. So right at the back end of last year, then it's been Christmas, I've been working hard in the sim. I've only been out and had a few rounds of golf since we did that lesson here, and I did notice a difference, but again, there's no point in just having kind of one lesson yeah. and then that's it forever. So that's why this year for me, I'm going to be working with a swing coach um, kind of once a month and then you once a month. And I think by summer, there's going to be a massive difference around the greens and chipping and stuff like that. Because I was amazed by that first lesson. And by the way, I would never come for a lesson in Nike Air Max. <laughs> I have forgot my golf shoes. Just had to get that in. I just realised that when I look when I looked down, I was like, "Oh yeah," and I forgot my glove. So for me, be like that, yeah. Front, yeah, so narrow stance. Front foot. That just came out really. <laughs> came out very low, first one. Well, with plenty of spin on. Yeah, it did, didn't it? Why are they coming out like that? Again, we see that you're going to lose a lot. Of, you're gonna... A lot of loft off there. Luckily, there's a bunker behind there to catch these ones. There we go. We're getting, we're getting into it now. There we go. So you can see the first couple of shots get a little bit okay, a little bit short, a little bit quick. Lofts off those, so it comes out very thin on the low edge. Then we open it up. We get a little bit too much height. So now we can find that medium. So we'll let that cover pass. That stopped in it. They're like ice and I've just stopped the ball dead on a freaking concrete green. That's what I think I've struggled with, finding that. Like, do I just let it drop with the weight or do I let it drop and then kind of go for it? And that's it, finding that, okay, because we're trusting it going longer now, but we still want to keep the speed on the way through. Yeah. That's a little bit heavy. Oof. Yeah, because yeah, I, was, I was doing that, then I was stopping here, wasn't I? Yeah, I, I remember, it. So yeah, I remember now. A good drill, what everyone can do. Nice and easy. Don't say left hand. And all we're going to do here is make a practice swing, and then keep our feet moving, and then come in and play the shot, keep moving, play the shot. Play the shot, and you'll see those four golf balls have gone, not bad, within three feet of each other. Forward, slower. Good. So three of those, one of them just snuck onto the front edge of the green, the camera will see, and the others have gone pretty much within six feet so same flight same trajectory because we've got the same tempo and we're, re we're basically getting the same kind of loft back onto the so is that floor. why why you see players on tv literally looking at they'll see a shot but then they'll stand there literally going you'll see them don't you they just in speak to it a lot yeah exactly so what people normally do is look at the flag so he's looking at his target and he's imagining how much backswing he'd need to put on there ah and why is that? Why would so, I just thinned it? Long to short, so we wanted it a little bit shorter on the way through. But we don't want it to be a case of it's... Stopping here. Correct. It's not the quick motion. It's not a quick motion then stop, because we'll lead that way first. We'll never have time to catch it up. So we want it to finish short, but with a good tempo. So that, that's another thing I was going to say, landing-wise, with a 52 or 56, whatever. If I'm zapping that flag and it's 25 yards, Am I playing a 20 yard shot? Yeah, so you think about where it's landing, so you're going to be landing at a 20 and it's going to have, it's going to have one big bounce and hopefully check. Yep. If not, it's going to run past. It's the same as if you've got a bunker. Okay, if you've got, a, let's say there's a bunker in between you know, the, the first bit of the green and the flag, you're instantly thinking you've got to get it over that anyway. So what's our back flag, 35? Much better, like a much more direct flight. That was good. 
again, landed as soft as anything, but good distance. It landed exactly. Yeah, you got a chance of putting that, do you know what I mean? In the summer on a hard green, that's going to have the bounce and then it's going to stop. You see there, plenty of loft on that. So we open that only up ever so slightly, you see how high it will <coughs> come out with yeah. that triangle. That's, that's run a lot further, hasn't it? Look yeah. at it, it's still going. So the difference, long slower than the previous one, because we've not got as much loft on, it's then going to let, allow it to run out. So yeah. we've not changed ball position, we've just changed what we've done with the club face, and we've made the same motion. So we're not trying to make it too complicated, but if we want to go a little bit higher, we can open it up. Right, here we are. So we're going to do now some bumping runs, because a lot of people, you're going to get there. For me, I want to be playing them shots, but sometimes I don't want to play them shots. Sometimes I'm just like, I've had a bad few shots. I'm not feeling confident. Do you know what? I just want to get next to the hole, man. Bump and run. Pitch and wedge? Yep, so pitch and wedge, I mean, here's a lie. We've got some different, you know, worm cast in front, which you're <laughs> going to get, and it's something to go over. So a lot of people, like I said, go to seven iron or eight iron. It becomes very short. They've got no real control. They don't know how it's going to land, or it comes off like a rocket, and it goes 10 foot past. So Pitching wedge, nice and easy. We can do a, pitch, a bump and run with a pitching wedge, although people don't think they can. So all we're going to do here, guys, is get him closer to the ball. So he's going to get feet nice and close together, a little bit taller. Yep. And then really, it's an extended putting motion. So he's thinking now exactly like you would do with a putter. You could even grip it like his putter. If, if you grip it slightly different, you might grip it like your putter. And just like that. Minimal motion. And is is that you saying? Are you looking to land it somewhere? I'm I looking to land it top of that hill. Yeah. So like I'm just close to the ball. Just look where you want it to land. A few practice swings. Landed at the top of the hill. But they're both. Yeah, that's run off a little bit. It's not bad. Coming again from there. It's downhill. It's tough. It's not an easy shot. The first one's very good. Second one again has got a good chance of a putt. Yeah. Yeah, so let's go to a bigger flag. In summer, you would land it a quarter of the distance to the flag, or out. And in winter, it's more like half. But like, would you say, what would you say? Like pretty well, would you say it's almost half? It, it, it depends on the conditions. Like I say, if a lot of people go, and I get people ask me on videos of, right, if I'm landing this, what's the roll percentage? Yeah, yeah. Don't overthink it, right? Just imagine if you were throwing a ball for me. Where you'd land it. You know the you know the conditions because you've played a few holes. You'd be throwing it. You're probably looking. You guys probably looking at landing it probably here. Yeah, it's just half, isn't it? Yeah. So just on the green, and then it's going to roll out. That is half on this occasion. But again, it might be if it was downhill, it might be landing it here. So landed perfectly where we said half. <laughs> That again would be inside tour average. Don't beat yourself up. This is not a shot where you happen to hit it to a foot. People. Yeah, you want to give yourself a eight, nice six to eight foot putt or yeah. ten foot. Even ten foot would be nice. Even ten foot on the green, giving yourself a chance. But we've done it the easiest way possible. We don't need a 50, 60 degree here. We don't need a 60. <coughs> plenty of, enough loft on there, but it's not going as high as people probably think. If you've got an 8 iron or 7 iron, you're going to have to risk bouncing it here in the rough, and then you never know how it's going to kick off a worm cast at all. So them two, or I'd be buzzing with them two. Two, very good. Because sometimes, like I say, sometimes I get there, I think, 56. Like I say, you've had a little bad run of holes, and your head's gone down a little bit. Yeah. You don't want to be getting out of 56 degree here of your front foot you've and trying to... to... Catch it perfect, you want to yeah. get some spin on if it doesn't get... I mean, I don't always get spin, so in realistic terms, don't expect for spin, just expect for what is the most consistent. I'm going to put all them three next to each other and they're all, I'd be happy with all. <laughs> Consistency there, that you know, they're within two, well, they're in, within three feet of each other distance wise. It's very easy to control the distance, which is the main thing there. It's repeatable. Why wouldn't you always play this shot around the green then? 
the camper, if, if you've got this and you've got nothing to go over, then... It's when you, is, it, is it when you're like, you're back there, obviously, yeah. you have to go 50s. If we're in the rough and we need some loft or we've got to go over something, you know, think about it. But if you can, if you visualise it and you throw it and you could do it with the least amount of loft, that would be the club that I would go to. Too much? Yeah, hit a board <laughs> Nice! Ah! Hit a ball! I'm actually intrigued! Dodgy bounce. It's but a good shot. Yeah. Two, two good shots with most people, and I, I would hope they would, is take that because that's a good shot. But the problem is they're repeatable. When you've got a card in your hand, when you're trying to actually score, not just chipping onto the chipping green, yeah. there's a lot more tension, there's, there's a lot more that can go wrong with that than there is with the pitching. Yeah. Right. Thank you, as always. No um, yeah, like I said, I'm going to be with Chris every three to four weeks till, well, this whole year, really. So, some big plans, see how, how well we can do. Next, we're going to go out on the course, I think. I think yeah. we're ready for it. He hates the cold, but I'm going to keep dragging him out. Once we hit the driver or whatever and we get near the greens, talk through what I'd normally do and what Chris would actually have me doing. Because it's, it's all good and things sitting here, but on the same green. Yeah. But when the greens start getting different and there's hills and there's lives, I think we'll just get to the shot, stop. Have a little chat. What would you do? What are you going to do? Let's do this different. And that's it. Course management is one thing that can it's save a lot of people's shots because they go out there going, yeah, I've got one 80, I'm hitting a six iron. So they don't realise. Oh, yeah, as well. Pitching, yeah. So obviously we'll, we'll hit a tee shot and then we'll decide what we're going to do from there. Do you know what I mean? Just try and hit more greens. See what the sc It'll be interesting to see what score-wise we get. Could even, go, could even go low. Guys, thank you. Hope you enjoyed that. Like I said, loads more to come. Make sure you hit a comment. Um, if there's anything else you want me and Chris to do, apart from that, like, subscribe, and I'll see you soon.